Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this, the last day of the church year. So it's like New Year's Eve. It is so good to be worshiping with you today and always as we celebrate the reign of Christ on this Christ the King Sunday. As always, there are lots of things happening here at Prince of Peace. And the first thing is, last week we celebrated um, our Commitment Sunday, but not everybody was able to make a um, commitment for your financial or, uh, commitments or time. And so if you're interested in a pledge card, those are available through the ushers or out at the usher stand after service today. So thank you for um, helping us out by filling out those commitment cards. After church today, we invite you to join us in the fellowship hall as we look to brighten someone's day. Uh, um, the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service is inviting us all to send Christmas cards to refugees that are detained in the United States. And so we, are, um, we have uh, things available, cards, paper, uh, craft materials, things that you can use to make a Christmas card that we can send to somebody and uh, brighten their day this Christmas season. Also, as you probably remember, Thanksgiving is coming up this week, and so we are going to do the interfaith Thanksgiving service this year a little bit differently than we've done it in the past. So uh, those who are participating, uh, we have six uh, congregations who are participating will be present here in the sanctuary, but our congregations will all be live streaming it. So go to YouTube to live stream that service. Our combined choirs and the community faith leaders will be here, um, but we're inviting you to watch that service on your computer. And if you need more information about that, just contact the church office and we'll make sure that you can find it and uh, participate in that way. Then also, we know that Christmas is coming. Next week is the first Sunday of Advent, and we are hoping to have this space decorated in the beautiful way that it has been every year. If you are available next Saturday at 9 o'clock, please come and help with that decorating. Um, if you need more information, call the church office, but again, that will be on Saturday at 9 o'clock. Come and someone will tell you how you can put your talents to good use. And now, I remind you that each of us recognizes reverence for God and for worship in various ways, so I invite you to do that now, by standing or in the way that is most comfortable for you as we continue with our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sin for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of god and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is 
Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
first reading this morning is from the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was as white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Word of God, word of life. since the world began, your throne has been established. The Lord is King, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breaks of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. The second reading is from the book of Revelation, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. It is the one who comes 
comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Alleluia. According to the Holy Gospel, according to John, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoning Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Holy wisdom, holy word, praise, praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Today we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, Reign of Christ Sunday, this day when we recognize, celebrate, proclaim that the leader of us, our congregation, is Jesus. The one whom we follow is this King, this Jesus. But who is this King? Who is Jesus? Christ the King Sunday was instituted by a pope in the Catholic Church in 1925. Pope Pius XI was concerned about the, ra the, the uh, rising up of totalitarianism and fascism and wanted to remind people who followed Christ that our allegiance is to this king, this Jesus, and not to another king or another state. But who is this king? It might not surprise you that in the Lutheran Church we didn't actually follow what Pope Pius said, and so we in the Lutheran Church haven't been celebrating this Sunday until after Vatican II, when we got together with churches around the world and decided that we were going to read the same lessons every week in the lectionary. And this Sunday became the day that we celebrate Christ as our King. This last Sunday of the church year, this culmination of all that we have celebrated all year this New Year's Eve, as it were, became about lifting up Christ as our King. But we, with Pilate, ask, who is this King? What has he done? And what are we following? In the story we hear about Jesus tonight, it is the night of Jesus' death. Before the peace that we hear today, we know that Jesus had been with his friends in the garden. He'd been praying there, seeking the will of God, hoping that God's will might be something different than Jesus had known probably for his entire life that it would be. Jesus praying there with his friends had seen a whole army of people come to find him, to arrest him. In that moment, 
one of Jesus' disciples pulled out his sword and cut off the ear of one of these soldiers. But this king, instead of allowing or encouraging this kind of insurrection, instead of allowing or encouraging this kind of violence, told Peter to put away his sword. This is a king who leads through nonviolence, a king who leads through love. Jesus reached out and healed that man's ear. This is a king who leads by healing. This king was arrested and dragged into court in front of someone who did not believe or understand but was trying to keep the peace. And so this is where we come to this exchange between Jesus and Pilate. You can imagine Pilate shaking his head in frustration. What am I supposed to do? How do I keep things peaceful and quiet? Pilate trying to keep his job. And Jesus not giving any answers, not outright speaking anything treasonous, which would allow Pilate easily to sentence him to death, but also not outright exonerating himself, which would allow Pilate in good faith just to let him go. So Pilate asks, who is this king? Are you a king? This is the king that we follow. This king of nonviolence, of love, of healing. This is the king that we follow. The one who leads with self-sacrifice. The one who encourages us to be better and do better and be closer to God by giving up the power that we have in this world and in this society. This is the king that we follow. The king who is so certain of what the future brings that he is willing to give up everything, everything, even his security, even his life, even his ego before Pilate so that the future that God has for us might come sooner, might come today, even in this moment. Who is this king, this Jesus? I am a person who really likes to make sense of things. I like to follow science. I like to follow research. I like to see how things work together. I enjoy mathematics when they make sense to me, which is not all the time, I admit. <laughs> I enjoy keeping up with the latest research on parenting and how children's brains work. I enjoy keeping up with the latest thoughts and philosophy about how we make meaning in the world. I enjoy making sense of the world. And I hate it when things don't make sense. It is hard for me when something happens and I can't point to this is the A plus B equals C. This week as Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted, I was not surprised, but I was troubled because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that someone can take a gun into a different place and kill people and have that be deemed okay. It doesn't make sense that what we understand to be justice doesn't feel like justice to many people around the country and around the world. Today we lift up transgender, or yesterday we lifted up Transgender Day of Remembrance. 
And it doesn't make sense to me that people are killed just for being who God created them to be. It doesn't make sense that we think violence is the answer when we follow a God, a king, who so clearly reaches out in love and in healing. It doesn't make sense to me that we spend billions of dollars on building up an army so that we can go and become one of the greatest earthly powers in the world, as though that ever actually has really worked at any time during history. And so when I follow a king, I want the king to make sense of the world. I want this king to tell me what matters. I want this king to tell me why it is that we behave in the ways that we behave, even when we know they're not going to work. I want this king to make sense of why Peter pulls out his sword and fights, even though Jesus is just going to tell him to stop it, to love each other, to give up his power, to trust in a future, to use love to transform this world. But this king isn't a king who makes sense of things. Instead, this is a king who gives meaning to things. Jesus gives up his power. Jesus gives up his life so that we can see the power of God in Jesus' resurrection. Jesus tells Peter to stop fighting, to stop the violence, so that we can see how God can love us into a different way of being together. Jesus doesn't seek to make sense as king, but to give us meaning in who we are, who he is, and what is to come. I wish that I could make meaning out of violence and war, out of a challenging justice system that sometimes doesn't work. I wish that I could make meaning out of the way that society is and the ways that I participate in it. And I can't today. But what I can do is look to this Jesus to this king, to follow this one who is so deeply loved and loving, who is so deeply nonviolent or anti-violence, who is so deeply committed to God's kingdom on earth that he gives up everything to show us a way to go who is so deeply hopeful and faithful to what God has for us in our future, that he doesn't give up hope even in these moments of his own trial and execution. This is the king whom we follow. And so today we celebrate this king, not the king that I want, not the king that in moments I think I need, but the king who loves me, lifts me up, and points a way to a different way of being, full of love and grace and hope that doesn't just transform us in the future, but transforms us in this very moment. So may we follow that king, and may that king bring us meaning and hope. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others especially ministries in our community, renew them in their work. And as we, this week, lift up Transgender Awareness Week, help us, Lord, to seek to understand and love all of your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person, and for all who are sick and suffering. We especially remember those listed in Hear Our Prayer, those who are on our hearts today, those we mention both silently and aloud now. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. Give, we give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now with these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. He took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
are here in the worship space and find that you can't find your communion cup, go ahead and raise your hand now and our ushers will ensure that you have one. Taste and see that the Lord is good. As we open the side with the bread, hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. And as we drink together, this is the blood of Christ dead for you. I invite you to stand to receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of Jesus' body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us in God's grace today and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Come in. Amen.
sing to the king. God, the beginning and end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Led by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.